Hello, my name's John and welcome to this episode of Life Happens, Let's Fix It. Uh, so on today's episode, we're going to be building a uh, sound media desk. Uh, this is a desk I built for my church, and basically it just holds our sound equipment. Um, and uh, we needed a, a bigger desk, so I thought I would, would build one. So uh, let's get started. To get started, I went in to sketch up and design the desk. And here is the final version that I came up with. It did, of course, take uh, many iterations and many hours of uh, trying different things and taking measurements, uh, which is what SketchUp is perfect for. Uh, so once you get your final design, then uh, you can just uh, go off those measurements and everything works out a lot better than trying to uh, get it designed on the fly. So I've uh, got some drawers here on the side for storage. And in the middle section there, a uh, place just where, for you to sit and put your knees underneath. And then on the left is th for the rack components. I bought some rails to, uh, to go in there for that. Uh, and then <clears throat> the main section here is for putting out your mixing board and your laptop and uh, other things. And then on the top shelf, you can put your microphone receivers for your wireless mics. And uh, there's a little section in the back for the wires to, uh, to drop down uh, to the back section. And to get to the back section, the two bottom panels on the back are removable. Uh, so those will come off, and then you can get in there to uh, hook everything up and tie into the conduit uh, that runs the wires to uh, speakers and uh, cameras and any other components you've got uh, in the building. So there's the final uh, design and a quick overview before we get started on the build. Uh, one other thing I did want to tell you guys about is a, a great extension I found for uh, SketchUp and it's called um, Open Cut List. And basically it allows you to uh, uh, generate a cut list from your finished design. And as far as the setup goes, you do need to uh, assign a material or a color to each of your uh, pieces. And uh, the ones that are solid wood need to be, you know, basically each different type of wood you need to set to a different material color. So I've got kind of three colors here. Uh, the dark brown is the, the plywood. And then the lighter brown is uh, solid uh, oak that I put in in a couple places. And then there's a lighter color that I use for the edge banding. And this program even calculates uh, how much edge banding you'll need. Uh, so that was pretty cool. And you do have to kind of assign one face of your uh, piece for the edge banding, so that might be a little bit tricky. But uh, anyway, once you get the material sign, you open up the extension and you go in for each material and you give it a name and tell it what, ki what type of uh, wood it is, whether it's sheet goods or solid. And then once you've done that, uh, you just click over to the parts list and uh, click a button to generate your parts list and, and here's what it spits out. It's absolutely fantastic. It gives you a cut list. You can even build in uh, overages. Um, here it's showing, it breaks it out into sections for uh, plywood and solid wood. And uh, once I uh, expand out the uh, summary at the top here, you'll see kind of the total list uh, of how much wood you need and give you a rough idea. Uh, and especially helpful was the, the edge banding here. It told me how many feet of it I would need. So anyway, excellent program and it actually even gets better for, the, uh, for your sheet goods. There is a button to generate a, uh, I guess a, a layout diagram. So you click that button and you have some configuration options to uh, that change how the pieces are positioned on the uh, on the sheet, but basically you just play around with those until you find something you like. And here you go; it tells you for each sheet of plywood uh, which parts are on there. And you'll notice there's a, a rough cut and a final cut, so you can even plan in like an extra half inch or so on each piece, so that uh, you can do things like trim off factory edges uh, and things like that. 
So really just overall an excellent program. I'd highly recommend it. And the cost is, uh, is pretty good. It's free. <laughs> so this is the free version of SketchUp that I use and this extension is free so no, no money out of pocket. Uh, you just go to the, uh, the Windows tab and go to the extension manager in SketchUp and uh, look up the part and uh, or look up the extension. So you just open it up. There's a search bar. Type in open cut list and, uh, and it comes right up. So there you go. I hope you really enjoy that. So with that, that's enough about SketchUp. So let's uh, Let's get started on our build and uh, just a, another quick tip, I printed out the, uh, the cut list from SketchUp so that those are handy when I get to uh, cutting these parts out. So the first step of course is to uh, break down our sheet goods and uh, start cutting our parts to final dimensions. So uh, this is just us getting started on that. Uh, a friend of mine came over to help me out and we just uh, pulled everything out in the driveway and just a couple pointers here you know you can see we've put down the painters tape uh, to help uh, with the uh, tear out and in uh, in hindsight I, I probably should have gotten a sharper blade so make sure you've got a good sharp blade with uh, the right number of teeth uh, for cutting cross cut on plywood you know you probably want a higher number of teeth uh, that you can get and then we just uh, found a straight the straightest board we could find and uh, marked where our cut line was and um, clamped that straight edge down and just uh, took our time. And you can see here we got two pieces of plywood. We just cut two at, two at a time so that the uh, parts would be identical. So uh, just take your time going a little slower because we are cutting through two full thicknesses. And there my blade's pinching just a hair so I just spread that cut out and finish the cut. Then once we've got all our sheet goods broken down, we can move over to the table saw and start cutting everything to the final uh, dimension. And you'll notice my sticky notes here, uh, with, a, with a build this big, with so many parts, um, I found it very helpful to uh, put sticky notes on each piece so you know, uh, you know which piece is which once you've cut everything out. And even using the sticky notes, we made a couple mistakes on, on a couple pieces. So um, if you can draw arrows on your sticky notes to kind of show the orientation uh, to match up to your cut diagram, that, that would be helpful. That's where we got messed up. We had a piece um, left over and um, you know we, we got confused on which way was up. And so we, we cut the, uh, the wrong dimensions. But anyway, so sticky notes, use arrows to mark orientation as well as it's also helpful to mark which is the factory edge. So uh, kind of once you get done, if you've, if you've set up your uh, part to be oversized, uh, like we mentioned in, uh, in the SketchUp part of this video, it's good to know which uh, size the factory edge so you can trim that off if you need to. Uh, so here we're just uh, working together. Uh, cutting these pieces out, labeling them, and stacking them over to the side. Then once we got uh, all our pieces cut, uh, some of them had to be uh, cut down like the drawer fronts and the drawer sides. And so we took those in the garage to the miter saw and uh, cut those down to size. And then uh, here's an example of uh, you cutting three at a time just to help make things closer to being identical and uh, you know, making things go a little faster. So with the help of a friend and about three hours on a Saturday morning, we got all our parts cut out, most of them to the final size. A uh, few will, will cut to fit later on in the project. Um, if you'll notice there are my rolling mobile carts. I'll put a card up in the top right corner if you want to check out my video on those. But uh, 
other than that, let's let's get started doing this build. So the first thing I did was to uh, do edge banding on all the visible edges. And so what I thought I would do is uh, just show you right here my technique on uh, one of the drawer pieces and just let you watch. Uh, so the first step is just to iron this on. I bought me a cheap iron at uh, Dollar General for, I don't know, 11 bucks, I think. But basically, you want to put the heat on this edge banding until it's just too hot to touch. And so once you've done that, get this uh, J-roller tool and uh, roll those edges while the, the glue is hot. And um, here I'm tilting it a little to the left and a little to the right to uh, make sure the edges kind of roll over uh, on each side. Then I grab a pair of flush cut snippers and cut the ends off flush. And, uh, and then basically I'm trimming off the edge. When you buy edge banding, you want to buy it just a little bit wider than uh, what you're, you're putting the edge banding on. So I think this is like 13 sixteenths uh, for use on three quarter inch plywood. So this takes a little bit of getting used to, but uh, you'll, you'll figure it out. And then Next, uh, just take a file and hold it at about a 15 degree angle and get that slight little bit of edge left. And this is one of the most important steps because this is the part where this edge banding will get caught and chipped off or ripped off uh, once your project's finished. So basically we're just using a file to uh, trim off that last little bit of edge and then go over it again, tilting your file at a 45 to just kind of put a little, slight little chamfer on that so you don't have a, a sharp edge. And that's that's about it. You can see this didn't take uh, very long. This is my first piece. Like with anything else, when you do something 10 or 15 or 30 times, you get better each time. Alright, so there's how I do my edge banding. As you can see, the results uh, turned out really well. I've been very pleased with this method. Uh, tried it three or four times now. Um, and this is uh, not my method that I came up with. Um, so I'll put a link down in the description below uh, for the Next Level Carpentry uh, YouTube channel. If you haven't uh, looked at him yet, you should check him out. He's got some really good detailed master carpentry videos. And uh, this edge banding technique, uh, when I told several of the people that I was doing this project and that I was going to be using edge banding, they all kind of went, ugh. And my guess is they've just not seen it done well um, and it you know tends to flake off. Uh, but this guy has a really good technique. I think his name's Matt. So uh, go ahead and break down and get you the right tools, you know, file, these flush cut uh, pliers our snippers. Uh, this is the trimmer to trim off the excess on a J-roller and an iron. So I think I got all of this for right at $85 and uh, then you're set to do edge banding and it makes you know fan, it makes plywood looks just fantastic. So uh, check that video out and uh, get you some good tools and uh, you'll be glad you did. All right, I've got all my drawers edge banded. The uh, the uh, sides of the actual drawer itself just got edge banded on the top because um, the front side will be covered by the faux front, and the back won't be seen, and the bottom will be covered up by the bottom. So one side edge banded on the sides of the drawer, and then for the faux front, of course, we do. We do all four sides. And 
got the uh, backs marked because uh, the front, the fronts were all cut out of one piece. So I need to keep them in order so that the grain pattern lines up when I get it finally installed. So uh, this is the back of the piece that has the writing on it. And this is the number one top piece and this side is up. So a little note to self. So there's all my long sides, short sides, and my five fronts for the five drawers. So off camera, I sanded all the uh, drawer pieces, sides and fronts, and now they're ready for a coat of uh, polyurethane on the drawers, and then a coat of uh, espresso stain on the drawer fronts. So these are the drawer fronts that I've got stained with uh, Minwax Espresso Penetrating Stain and then the drawer inside parts I'm just going to stain with the clear Minwax Polycrylic uh, water-based polyurethane. So after the first coat of polyurethane, these uh, pieces will still be rough to the touch. So I hit them with some 400 grit sandpaper to uh, lightly sand that down. And then put on a second coat and lightly sand after that and, and then a third coat. But the, uh, the second and third coats will feel much smoother to the touch. Uh, but I still you know, will follow up with a light, light sanding. So I'm ready to cut the drawer bottoms. Uh, and so I took my sheet of quarter inch uh, plywood and broke it down with the circular saw. And now I'll cut the pieces to their final dimensions on the table saw.
So off camera, I drilled uh, pocket holes, four in the front and uh, four in the back piece, and none on the sides. And so here we're just uh, clamping these together and getting everything lined up flush on the top and bottom and uh, lined up flush the front and back. And then just put your, uh, your pocket holes in. I didn't use glue. You can if you want to, but uh, these pocket holes, uh, screws hold, hold very well. And plus, I do glue on the bottom, so between those two, um, that should take care of it. Now we're ready to put our bottoms on. So uh, like I said before, um, I do put glue on these and use a uh, Type Bond 2 here, which is uh, waterproof glue. Uh, so don't really need that for this application, but I think uh, the Type Bond 2 gives you a little bit more working time. Not that we, not that we need it on these drawers, but anyway, it's what I had. And so here we're just putting a, a bead of glue around the edge, and we'll go ahead and spread that. Now we just place our bottom on and get uh, two sides lined up, and then with your nail gun, we want to. Uh, nail one side first and then before you get too crazy with the nails we want to check the second side and make sure the uh, drawer is square so if your uh, bottom has been cut square and you've lined up one side flush on the front then if you line up the second side uh, adjacent side one of the adjacent sides anyway you get that lined up and uh, put your nail in then and the rest of the drawer should be square. So this one drawer side had a little bit of a bow in it so I'm holding my uh, hand underneath to uh, pull that bow out. Just make sure you get your fingers uh, clear before you uh, put that nail in. And uh, one other tip, if you hold your nail gun the way I've got it, the nail will tend to go left or right of the, the nail gun the way I had it held. So when you hold it that way, if it does kind of blow out left or right, then it's going into the plywood and not out the side. And now that the drawer is finished, we'll just put a uh, final coat of polyurethane on the, the bottom. And I think I only did you know one or two coats on the the sides uh, when I showed it earlier. So this will just put a final coat on uh, everything. So this video is getting pretty long, so I'm going to break it into a, a two-parter. So this first part covered the uh, cutout of the parts, um, sketch up, and then putting the drawers together and edge banding, and so a lot of good stuff in this video. Uh, but anyway, keep an eye out for the next video where we'll uh, finish everything up and uh, complete the final assembly. So thanks for watching. Uh, life happens. Let's fix it. And if you like this video, please hit the like button, and again, as always, I would love to have you as a subscriber to my channel. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time.